It's time now to return to this diagram from before that we saw in segmentation. We've seen how logical addresses are translated to linear addresses through things like the GDT, and we've been treating it as if linear addresses were equal to physical addresses, but now we can finally see virtual addresses. So logical addresses, again, were those far pointers that had a segment selector and an offset. Linear addresses was some notional flat 64-bit space for purposes of this class post-segmentation. And now virtual addresses are linear addresses that take paging into account, and we'll learn all about paging in this section. And finally, virtual addresses will translate through to physical addresses, which are some offset into physical RAM. So this was the diagram we had before with logical addresses going through the GDT, linear addresses going directly to physical. Now to remove the wool from your eyes, and we have virtual addresses, which are the linear addresses as analyzed through some sort of page table structure. So the terminology for this section is called paging because chunks of memory are divided into fixed size pieces called pages. Now there's an analogy you can use to kind of think about how memory is organized. I don't remember whether I got this out of some Intel description or just some random person on the internet, but I like this analogy. So if you think of all information is organized into a library, and that's somewhat daunting, it's just all over the place. So one of the first things you would do when you go to a library is use some sort of lookup table in order to find the particular book that has the information that you want. From that book, you might then select an individual page, and on the individual page, you might select a particular sentence, or using the Intel terminology, you might go for a particular word. Remember, the Intel word was a 16-bit value, a D word was a 32-bit value, so a word would be dark, a double word would be dark tower. Thank you, Sai. So this analogy is basically just saying a page is some blob of information, but within the page are the actual individual data bytes that we're trying to access. So when paging is enabled, a linear address is the same thing as a virtual memory address or a virtual address, so I'll just end up using those terms interchangeably very frequently. And you'll also occasionally hear me use the term frame to refer to a page-sized chunk of physical memory. So if a page has some particular size, like four kilobytes, then a frame will just refer to a four kilobyte chunk of physical memory. Also, occasionally, I'll refer to things like the memory management unit. The MMU is basically going to be treated as the piece of hardware, which is responsible for taking into account, it, it utilizes these tables, these things like the GDT, LDT, it utilizes these page tables we're going to learn about next. And it's hardware that walks these tables that software sets up in order to do this whole logical to physical address translation. Also, eventually, we'll talk about the translation look-aside buffer, which is basically a cache of virtual to physical mappings. So from the Wikipedia page, this is a good enough view of things. You've got your CPU, and it may be issuing requests for particular virtual addresses, and then the MMU has to translate through the tables we're going to learn about next to find physical addresses. Sometimes it walks the tables, but if it can get away with it, it'll use the TLB translation look-aside buffer as just a cache to say, well, this virtual address maps to that physical address. Now, paging makes memory access virtual in sort of two senses. The first sense of the word virtual memory is the notion that there's no longer a one-to-one -one correspondence between linear addresses and physical, and that means you might have some high linear address and it may map to a low physical address, or you may have low that maps to high, or low that maps to nothing at all. So the memory addresses become virtual in the sense that you can't expect a one-to-one -one correspondence between some quote-unquote address you see and the actual address that goes out to the physical hardware buses to go index into RAM. Now the thing to remember is that for most of human history, it was very cost prohibitive to have 2 to the 32 bytes of RAM. Only the most wealthy of rulers, such as Gilgamesh, could possibly afford to have four gigabytes of RAM. And that, of course, meant that virtual memory was, for the most part, translating a large 2 to the 32-bit space to a small chunk of physical memory, whatever you could afford in your computer. And now, when paging is enabled on 64-bit systems, we are in the area of time where it's cost prohibitive for people to have 2 to the 64 bytes of RAM. So necessarily, it's always going to be the case that the linear address space, the 64-bit address space, is going to map from a large chunk of linear address space to a small chunk of physical memory. No one has 
due to the 64 bytes of RAM today. Now memory can also be virtual in a different sense of the word. Specifically, it could be the case that memory that is not in active or frequent use at the moment is ultimately removed from RAM and transferred to some slower storage, such as your hard drive or SSD. That's called being the RAM is swapped out or it's paged out to disk. And then if and when a process gets scheduled and that particular RAM gets accessed, then the operating system on demand can go ahead and pull that memory in and put it back into RAM. And so this definition is actually what we see Intel use in the manual at some places. And this is also something which I personally use just in my nerdy terminology frequently when I'm trying to you know, stop and sit and activate my long-term storage memory for something that I haven't dealt with in a while. I say, you know, hold on, I'm trying to page this back in right now. I don't remember how this works. So this sort of virtual memory is of course very good because it allows your operating system to pretend that it has more RAM than it actually physically does, which was very important for a long time. And the thing is that it will of course come at a performance penalty cost. If you remember the memory hierarchy, it's you know orders of magnitude slower to try to go out to solid state storage today than it is to just access RAM. Although there are sort of hybrid uh, storage technologies coming along that are making that much smaller. So the thing is of course that it's definitely worth it to uh, pretend to have this sort of RAM rather than just start having the operating system throw, it, throw up its hands and say, oh, I don't know, I don't have any more RAM for you. Sorry, can't run any more programs. Sorry, you know, this program used up all the memory. That other program has to crash now. So that sort of virtual memory has always been extremely useful as well. And that mechanism is ultimately enabled by this paging technology we'll talk about in a second. All right, so what did we learn about in this section? Just very trivially, we got our reintroduction to this linear address space, which for our purposes is just some big flat 64-bit space. And we have this notion that there's pages as fixed size chunks of, of memory, fixed size chunks of virtual memory, and frames are the fixed size chunks of physical memory that back it. And so now in the next sections, we're going to try to understand how all these tables work to get us from here to there.